Welcome to the All Things DER podcast brought to you by AEIC. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Cook. In this podcast, I dig in, define, and discuss where the new energy economy is heading with electric industry leaders and explore all the ways the distributed energy resources can modernize and improve our ever-evolving power grid. Thank you for joining us. In today's episode, I am turning the tables and being interviewed by Nora Mead Brownell. She is the founding member of SB Energy Solutions, was a former regulator at FERC, Pennsylvania, and the president of NARUC and she's very passionate for a new utility business model. And me, as the general manager for Advanced Grid Solutions for Duquesne Light in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the host of All Things DER podcast, I am sharing more about what energized me to pursue cleaner energy and how I hope this platform will allow us to work cooperatively to find synergistic solutions to the most pressing power industry issues of this generation. Nora and I discussed the importance of ongoing education and continuous communication across all sectors of the power industry, and how we can embrace new DER while ensuring the reliability of current systems. From how we can define and build systems from a resilience perspective to incentivizing thinking outside the box across the industry as a whole. We dig into a variety of ways to educate, communicate, and utilize the diverse distributed energy resources we have available in this new energy economy. Liz, tell us what you've been thinking about in terms of building the grid for tomorrow and what tools you see out there and frankly, how you're using line vision. That's that's a loaded question, but uh, I guess I will share, you know, I'm coming from a system planner perspective. Uh, My career started as a power system engineering consultant. So overlooking model building and running studies. So here at Duquesne Light, I was the senior manager of system planning for transmission and distribution. And with everything that's happening in our industry, such as ask the questions being asked, what are we doing about extreme weather conditions? How are we building resiliency into our grid as well as reliability? Also the access and affordability to new technology and innovations such as dynamic line rating uh, sensor So with all of this new visibility to not only our assets that are in, but also to the new assets that are being installed at the edge, we started asking questions really, how can we define and build out our system from a resilience and reliability perspective, while also advancing clean energy solutions and advancing equity into serving all and not just some. So with that dynamic line rating and the phenomena of using these sensors to really look out at our transmission lines and have a better understanding of the capability and enhance may possibly the ratings of those assets was very niche in where the space that I was sitting in. So working with line vision, we installed several uh, sensors on one of our transmission lines And we began pulling the data back um, starting last fall. And we want to continue to do this for possibility of looking into other lines. So we really can gather this information, this data from our transmission grid to help advance these agendas that we have in regards to unlocking the queue, eliminating congestion on the transmission, and also providing operational flexibility to the grid itself. And I think Duquesne Light being in Western PA is a great place for us to really start looking at this phenomena and using this technology and thinking outside the box as we move forward. And and I think this is such an exciting time to be in this industry. Rarely do people say that, but what you're talking about is an incredible number of new externalities that are driving different demands on old assets. So optimizing the grid, which dynamic line raisings obviously do, but also getting better information on asset health because these extreme conditions, certainly we can't no longer rely on maintenance, standard maintenance procedures and things like that. So I was particularly enthused about order 881, which FERC issued this year that recognizes the importance of GETs or grid enhancing technologies of which line vision is one. And I don't know how you're thinking about that and how that fits into your plans 
and, and what a difference that can make in how you accommodate new customers. These are low capital investments by and large, but they answer a lot of questions. They're not only solving for one problem, but what, what kinds of other things are you thinking of? I see DLR similar to embracing and utilizing AMI uh, data. So if you think about our grid has been designed over the last 140 years to serve a one-way power flow for a generation that was decided and placed 60, 70 years ago to serve the bulk of our customers. And so as we embrace these smart meters or advanced meter infrastructure that was kind of rolled out starting in 2009 and utilities continue to roll them out, there's data at the edge of our grid that gives us this new situational awareness that we never had before. So instead of just understanding what the consumption is, which is from a technology perspective where you're feeding this data back to the planners and the operators so you can manage the grid to the edge, it also gives you voltage, VARs, watts, and sends all of these events. So we can really see the grid differently and then start planning it more holistically, right? So, I mean, I can go into the weeds of how Transmission planning is very vastly different than distribution planning, but fundamentally, you, we need to understand where is our load and what is that load doing. And now, not only is it a electron sink, aka taking the electrons off the grid, it is also pushing electrons back onto the grid. So it's more important than ever. In regards to AMI, that's a big area where we are focusing of gathering that data and then starting to bring data science and machine learning and really understanding how we can take this large, big data and centralize it into how we plan and then ultimately operate our grid. Um, so that really gets me excited. And I see this is a great counterpart to the transmission uh, data that we receive from DLR. So I'm excited to be looking at some new technologies that go even beyond AMI at about a third of the price. So I'll be sure and share those with you because the wonderful thing about innovation that we see happening today, which we haven't really seen in the last 50 years, is that it continues to build on things. And that's why I like that a lot of this is lower capital. So you're not investing blindly in huge projects, which we still need. But we can plan those huge projects more effectively to address the issue of equity that you mentioned and indeed get us to our zero carbon goals. So what are you hearing from customers, large and small, about their expectations for kind of the brave new world? That's a fairly loaded question, but I think the first fundamental term that popped out is integrated distribution planning. There's a lot of interest, not only from the utilities perspective, but also understanding what our customers want. Knowing at all times our customers are going to be vastly different in regards to wanting to be an active participant and how they use their energy, or if they are eager and willing to install the electric vehicle charger at their home, their solar, incorporate a battery, they become a very active customer. But we also have to continue to serve those customers that are not engaged or at this time um, looking for that. So how can we balance the in-between of those two, or in the study we've done, multiple segmentation of customers? And I think to do that is really the education and bring awareness that to be able to serve this flexible, active customer, as well as these customers that are just a load that ultimately may grow to be active, we need the data in between. And then we should start actively working on, and this is kind of my place, is educating our customers of how we can incorporate and be partners in this evolution, right? So the grid is here to supply you electrons at all times, and we're here to be safe right? Of course, affordable, which is one, and reliable, but also this resilience component. So how do we communicate and educate that? We have to bring this information back and then continue to share. That is integrated distribution planning, right? It's this open, transparent awareness of what the grid can do today, what the others want the grid to do, and then how do we build that bridge between those two in a very equitable way? Uh, we can't forget that not everyone's doing it this at the same time. This is me maybe being on a soapbox, is the utility as a whole has not really been incentivized to step outside of the box they've been put in to be innovative and to drive these types of new ways of thinking because 
you know, it's just who we are and the regulatory environment we're in is like, you have to have a cost benefit analysis. And that's typically yes. Yeah, so what's this going to cost our customers? What is it going to cost everyone that's involved in the grid? But you really can't prove that out until you get the data, you run the numbers, you run the models, you do the studies, and that needs to be done across all parties and users and the utility itself. So that's a long-winded answer, but I think it's very intertwined uh, that we need to focus on that open and transparency of what we're all doing together. And, and say a little about educating the team internally, because utilities are notoriously siloed. I've spoken to a number of them about various technologies, and the answer I often get is, well, I'm the transmission guy, I'm not the distribution guy or the meter guy. And so are you finding challenges, and how are you using, for example, the great uh, data that Line Vision provides to share with your colleagues to help them think differently? This may be unique to me, but one thing that I, I think it was the environment I was mentored in as a consultant was to be a teacher and really want to share knowledge and drive that awareness so that we can come to the table and think. So one thing I did right away as the transmission planning manager when I first got hired at DLC is I noticed that there was a lot of decisions being made and there was a there's a tie between the distribution and transmission so the questions were being asked like well what's happening on the distribution that's triggering transmission engagement so i actually put together a lunch and learn and i and i brought in our engineering and programs group and i taught the impacts of distributed energy resources that was 2017 and i actually got very positive feedback so with the willing of my management and leadership i've been doing these electric utility 101 courses and with that formulating this for IT, procurement, human resources, right? All the different departments that it really takes for a util utility to respond to new ways of thinking and new innovation. Uh, so one way to kind of inform is really creating that educational content, which I love to do because I love to teach, and bring in the compliance team, bring in the cybersecurity team, bring in the IT team, right? All of the different internal stakeholder groups and continuously educate. Uh, I think many of us know that it actually takes one hearing something multiple times. So no, it's not just one and done. It's this continuous messaging that is going on internally. And I think the next step is really getting that message out externally to those people that don't actually understand the physics of the grid. And so that we can all be talking about, you know, why we're going where we're going. That's great. And I, I wonder, how do you share that with regulators? So FERC, I think, clearly envisions a more performance-based regime as opposed to that old rate-based rate of return where the bigger the project, the more money you make. So it's, it's more fun to build the big stuff than this kind of incremental change technology that will allow you, in fact, to build the big stuff more effectively. But how are you communicating that with regulators who, who might not be looking at incentives like Order 881? And how do you hold yourself and your partners accountable for what you're accomplishing that adds value either to resilience or reducing congestion or greater access, uh, better efficiency, whatever? I think it comes down to creating the platforms and the environment for industry experts like myself and others to educate on a baseline, right? It becomes very complicated and webbed. I mean, just as I spoke earlier, sitting just from a system planner's perspective, what are you doing about extreme weather? What are you doing about DER? All of this new technology is now affordable. How are you preparing for this future of electrification, transportation electrification? And oh, by the way, are you utilizing all the big data that's available? So, I mean, that's just one chair, right? And how are you going to reduce energy burden? How are you going to build out resiliency? How are you going to advance energy equity, right? So it's, again, creating these technical work conferences, continuous educational, where these people can come in and really from a altruistic win-win-win position, because we are at a pivotal moment, it's very dynamic, some even say the fourth industrial revolution, is that we have to look at the assets that ha we have today and they have to exist as we transform to this future that has yet to be defined. And really, there is so much technology and innovation available. How do we gain access to that as a unit and not all of these stakeholders? Because if you think, and I always go back to history, I think I'm a history buff, is when the grid was growing, there was only one or two layers of people deciding how to run the transmission line. You know, 
a transmission line that's built now went through two farms. Now it's through 400 plus residents' homes, right? There's a this exhaustion of not in my backyard, right? So the whole way we approach building out the grid, changing the grid, transforming the grid has to come from layers of hierarchy and multiple stakeholders. So how do we do that? I think the forums, the workshops, the education needs to be greater, more robust, and more reoccurring, in my opinion. That's the only way we're going to learn. Do we need more incentives? Do we need different incentives? Do we really need grant programs from DOE? How does all the how do all the pieces fit together? So I think as we're transforming, we have to realize, you know, there's going to be multiple stakeholders with multiple agendas. And the way things are currently set up help run a business that is viable, right? Like electric utility serves electrons, right? So, and then we as a society have made that like the lifeline of society. So how to really pivot or flip an industry that's fluid and working, I think new incentives or new ways of thinking as a whole is very important because you're always going to have the old way of thinking, but we have to, how do we do that gray merge of new way while still focusing on keeping the lines up, keeping the transformers solid and the grid ma maintained. So it's, it's a constant balance. So we need to insert new ways to incentivize us to think differently. That's great. And you, you mentioned that you're trying outline vision. You're going to expand that as you move forward. What other kinds of things are you thinking about? What does the future bring? In regards to the electric utility space is really that I think rebuilding and educating that demand to supply side interaction. Uh, knowing with electric vehicles, batteries, solar, and who knows what else in regards to distributed generation at the edge is going to require communication networks, uh, sensoring devices, and large computers to run these kind of analytics to understand. So I think uh, as DLC, we actually just partnered with the University of Pittsburgh, and we're going to be engaging with an RTDS lab, real-time digital simulator. Uh, I think that's a great first step. So we can start playing with the devices in a lab setting before going out to the field. We're going to continue to look at non-wire alternatives. So when looking at these new large loads that seem to be appearing more rapidly in the last three years than the 15 years that I've been uh, looking at utility systems, is how do we, instead of new wires, new transformers, embrace new technology to offset the new load? So non-wire alternatives and understanding how we can use those in our toolbox are probably two of the ones I thought off the top of my head. <laughs> That's great. Well, I hope you do a lunch and learn when you're doing that simulator so we can all learn what's, what's coming next because it's very exciting. Yes, it's very exciting. Another big area is workforce development, right? Like how do we inspire and create the next line of uh, transmission and distribution engineers and planners? So shout out to any of those that are listening, um, it's a great industry to be in right now. It's a really exciting industry. And I'm glad you gave that shout out because we also need new data engineers, people who can do those analytics, people who can operate across functional lines in a way that we haven't had to do before and absorb and transcribe almost for users those massive amounts of data because data is great, but if you don't know how to use it, it's not all that helpful. and pretty cumbersome. Right, it's like paralyzing, right? So you have large <laughs> amounts of data. So just having the data scientists and just the, the savviness of bringing that data, it's gonna be very important. And understanding the difference between a transmission and distribution grid, I think is a fundamental thing that we need to educate others on as well. I've been in the field for 30 years now. And believe me, I have that conversation every day with people who should know better, but that's the world we live in. Liz, this has been terrific, and there is a lot here to absorb. I hope we can continue the conversation. But is there any words of wisdom or wish list that you have if you could be the Tsarina of energy? Although I already am, actually, so, but I can share it. I guess when working with utility, remember what they're focused on. So if you can support, drive, develop, create to help those initiatives for internal stakeholder discussions is super helpful. Don't give up. I think, you know, there's there's a gray area, but like if you're, you're on a mission, you have a goal, keep sharing and then get your ear to the ground and really start to understand like 
the utility, the state they're in, the regulatory environment, the federal regulatory environment, and you know what is what they're being asked of and what that dynamic is. Because every utility is sitting in a different space and they're allowed and not allowed to do certain things. So the conversation can get confusing quite quickly if you're not aware of like where they're situated and how they're sitting um, so that you can speak their language. And so I think we have some great utility industry groups where we speak candidly and can talk on that level. But when you get outside of that industry, you start to be fearful because you may be saying something that may not be relevant to the area you're working in. So you, you don't have that fluid uh, conversation. So um, just for those that want to engage with the utility and vice versa, you know, understand where we're all coming from to have that conversation. Well, that's great. And, and I think it would be helpful if we all did it together and again, reach out to the other stakeholders who, who also often have influence, but not the information they need. So I hope we can continue to work with you on doing that and look forward to looking at that test run that you're doing at the university and the information you're getting from Line Vision. So thanks so much, Liz, and enjoy your day. That's a wrap for this week's episode of All Things DER. Thanks for tuning in. I hope today's conversation got you thinking about new and creative ways to improve our power grid. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to hear new episodes. This podcast is brought to you by AEIC, the place where operations leaders come together to share knowledge and provide guidance to the electric utility industry. We'll be back with a new episode next week. Until then, keep powering on. Thank mm-hmm. you.